Hey everyone, it's Carly Hall, and today's tutorial will be heavily focused on software. I am teaching you how to achieve an offset or a shadow layer, but we will be talking primarily about software. So we won't be doing any projects, but we'll walk through how to create an offset in Silhouette Studio and Adobe Illustrator and some tips and tricks and what not to do. So we're going to start with Silhouette Studio. And if you've watched my engraving tutorial, you will know that I love using Silhouette Studio with my Cricut. So you can see I have Silhouette Studio Business Edition, but if you want to download the free version, you can do that as well and try out the features before you purchase Business Edition. But you will need Business Edition to export to an SVG. And I'll show you what not to do and why not to do it, um, because I see a lot of people trying to kind of hack it and um, screenshot, but I'm gonna show you why I don't recommend doing that. To get started, we're going to choose a text tool over here, and then we're just going, oops, we don't want a note. We want a text tool. Type out the word, and then we will change it to whatever font you want to use. I want this chunky font, it's called Watermelon. And you'll notice that the default that Silhouette chooses is a um, clear fill, no fill, and a red outline. And I'm gonna change that so that we can see what we're doing. So I'm just gonna choose pink for both. And what an offset is, is it's a layer behind your word that shadows the image so that if you wanted to glue it on top of it, or if you wanted to do two layers of vinyl or iron on, you could do that. So. Now that we have our word typed out, we're going to find the offset tool. So it looks like this, it's the star icon, and you can find it in several different places depending on what your layout looks like. You can also come up to the panel and choose um, the offset panel and it will open it as well. So there's several places to find it. And then we're going to choose offset. You also have an internal offset option, but since we want it to be on the outside, we'll choose offset. And then while it's still in this panel, if you click outside of the panel, so say I click right here, it sets that offset. So you don't wanna do that because now you're locked in with that size. So we're gonna delete that and then come back over here and start over. So you wanna make sure that you stay in this panel and if you click away, just know that that locks in your settings. And then depending on how big you want that offset layer to be, you can slide your distance slider and you can also choose rounded corners or sharp corners. I'm gonna choose rounded and then I'm gonna click apply. Now you'll notice that all of those layers automatically weld together and create one solid background layer. So if I wanna pull this layer out, I can take a look at this. We'll change the color to this gray color here. I don't think I chose the same gray, third over. So, so this gray color and then if I put this back on top, now I have that perfect shadow layer. So it's that easy to create an offset. Now, what I see people do though, is because they don't wanna pay for business edition, which I understand because it is an investment. What they do is they zoom in really tight so that they can get nice and close. They change both of the colors of their image to black so that it's nice and crisp. Might be even more crisp if I turn off that. And then they screenshot it. To screenshot on a Mac, it's Shift Command 4, I don't even wanna tell you that because I don't want you doing this because I'm gonna show you why. So I have my screenshot and I'm gonna come over to Design Space and we're gonna upload that screenshot. So I just clicked on Upload, Browse, and then my screenshot here and I'm gonna choose that. Now it doesn't matter which one you choose because it's going to all be bad. So I've tried it with every single one to confirm my suspicion, but even if we do simple, which would in my opinion be the best um, since this is a simple shape, complex, I feel like in this situation would actually make it worse. But again, I don't recommend this, so I don't want you to even do it. We're gonna erase the background. We're gonna zoom out. Make sure you get those insides. And if you are used to uploading on Design Space, you know that you can do this with images that you steal off the internet. Yes, when you take an image off the internet and copy it, it is stealing, and I won't go into that, but don't do that. So we're gonna choose it as a say, uh, we're gonna save it as a cut image and then we're gonna click save. Now when I bring this in, I want you to notice, let's make this bigger. 
I want you to notice that it is super jagged. That's because we took a low resolution non-vector image and we brought it in and tried to illegally steal it. So I think Silhouette prevents us from doing that by making the edges purposely jagged. But I'm gonna show you how to slice them apart just so you know. So we're gonna put a rectangle over the top of them, highlight both the rectangle and the background. You can see both of them are selected on my layers panel and we're gonna slice them apart. And then you can see here that I have my layers good to go. But again, super jagged. If I were to cut that, my machine would sound like it was broken. So that is not what I recommend. This is not what I recommend. So coming back over here, we are going to change this to gray so that we have our two layers. And now we're gonna do what you should do by investing in Silhouette Studio Business Edition. We're gonna click File. We're gonna do Save As and Save to Hard Drive. Then we're gonna change it to whatever we wanna call it. And then we're gonna choose SVG and export that. Now coming back over to Cricut Design Space, we're gonna upload it, upload our image, browse, choose the Hello SVG, and you'll see that it comes in. We don't have to do any erasing or anything. We'll click Save and then click on that. Also notice when it comes in, you have several different layers. So we're gonna ungroup that. And now if I click on that black layer, I can move that around and I can also move all the individual letters. So if I wanted to make this a rainbow, which of course I do because who doesn't love rainbows, we can change all of these colors to the rainbow, just like this. And that is a benefit of a real SVG file. The other benefit is obviously, oops, how smooth the image is. So I'll bring this, let's group all this back together and bring it up to our stolen image up here. You can see just how jagged the exact same image is when we don't bring it in properly. So again, not recommended in the least, but I see so many people doing this and it breaks my heart because for you know a one-time payment, you can get these beautiful, clean SVGs. So that's how you do it in Silhouette Studio. We're gonna go back to Silhouette Studio in a second, but I wanna show you how to do the same thing in Adobe Illustrator. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing in Adobe Illustrator, and we're going to start with using the text tool. Adobe is a little bit different because it is a monthly subscription, so it's not a one-time payment. I pay for my subscription for the entire Creative Cloud for an entire year, and you also have the option to pay for just one app like Adobe Illustrator per month or per, per year. So after you type out your word, it was very similar to Silhouette Studio. You will have to do an additional step here though, because Adobe Illustrator sees this as a text and not a shape. So we're gonna right click when we're all happy with all of the text edits. We're gonna click Create Outlines. Once you do this, the text is no longer editable. So it's kind of like the weld function in Cricut Design Space. So if you wanna look at your outline view, you can on your keyboard click Command Y and it will show you what the outlines look like. So now that we have that set, I am going to select them all and then we are going to use the offset window. So we're gonna to come to Object, drop down to Path and then do Offset Path. We will use the different measurements here. There isn't a slider, but you can type in whatever measurement you want and then click preview. If you want it to be bigger, you can type in a bigger measurement and then click preview and you can see how that works there. I'm using points, but you can use any unit of measurement. And then you can also round your edges or bevel them, whatever you want to, it to look like. So you can play around with all those different tools. Click okay. And then on this part, you'll notice that they are not welded together. So let me change the color here. While the offset is done, all the different shapes are the outline of those individual letters. So to unite them, we are going to use the Pathfinder window. And if it's not on your toolbar on the right, you can come up to window and choose Pathfinder and that will open it up for you. And while they are all selected still, we're just going to choose this icon here, the unite icon and unite them together. Now don't worry, we just need to send this to the back arrange, send to the back, and we're good to go. 
So if we want to see the outline view, you can see that you have a outline and your letters on top. So we are going to save this by coming up to File, Save As, and then we'll call this Hello Adobe Illustrator. We're going to save it as a SVG and then click Save. All of the default, sec uh, default settings are just fine, so click OK. And then coming back over to Cricut Design Space, we're going to upload it just so you can see that it comes in nice and smooth and with all the layers intact. So we'll drop this in. And just like our Silhouette Studio image, you can see that if I ungroup it, I have all those letters that I can change the colors to and a very smooth offset pattern. So we do not want to use that original screenshot. And that's why, because when you export to an SVG, you get these nice, smooth, beautiful offsets. All right, one more thing um, that I want to call out about why offset is important. So we can do this in Silhouette Studio or Adobe Illustrator, but I'll use Silhouette Studio since I do recommend Silhouette Studio to beginners because it is only a one-time payment and there's that free version to practice in. So you can download it for free even without a Silhouette machine and play around with it before you decide to upgrade to the business edition. So we are going to use a script font and I just want you to see that when you type a script font in Adobe or Silhouette Studio, it actually kerns together. So kerning is the spacing between letters and it comes in and they all are touching because as we know in Cricut Design Space, when they come in, they're not touching. Of course, they are not welded together in Silhouette Studio, which is why I do like how they do the outline view for cursive letters, because then you know that you have to weld them together. So similar to the Pathfinder window in Adobe Illustrator, there is a modify window in Silhouette Studio, and you can find that again by choosing panels and then doing modify if you don't see it. And then they have a unite or weld option as well. So we can just choose weld. And then if you wanna get rid of any parts that you don't like, you can actually highlight specific points and delete them from your file so that you don't need those little cuts that are just kind of a headache. So now that that's deleted, I can zoom back out. So what I wanna talk about is that sometimes when you find a beautiful script font like this one, this one is Argentinian Knights, sometimes it's too thin to cut. And so one of my tips is that you can offset it just a hair so that it's a little thicker and will cut a little nicer on your Cricut machine. So again, using the offset window, we're going to choose offset, but this time I'm just going to do a micro offset and we're going to choose 0 0.02 and enter and then click apply. So it's just a tiny difference and then we're going to highlight both of them and using the modify window again, we're going to click weld. So you can see how addicting this can get because it's super fun to make micro adjustments to change your font just a little bit and get a completely new image that will work great with your cutting machine. So again, let's just change that to another color and see what we've made here. So just as a practice, we're gonna export and upload again. So we're gonna say save as, save to hard drive, and then type out love, and we want it to be an SVG. And then back over to design space, we're gonna upload that and choose love. The great thing about using all of these images is that you can upload these and then save them for offline use. You do need to be on the internet to upload, but if I wanted to um, save that for offline use, I can. Okay, so now I can bring this in. Oh, you can make it offline use by clicking download. So if you click on the image and then click download, now when I go offline, I can use this. Just another extra little fun fact, and we'll insert. And when you have a welded image like that, Cricut sees it as one layer and one color. So it'll cut perfectly set to go. You can see up here, it's one layer and good to go. So while I love Cricut Design Space, it just does not have the functions that you would find in Silhouette Studio, both Silhouette Studio, Designer Edition or Business Edition. But Business Edition is the one that you need to export to SVG. So there are extra features in Design Designer Edition, but 
I do find that the best bang for your buck is getting the business edition so you can export to SVG. So that is Silhouette Studio and then Adobe Illustrator. Again, you can do all of these things as well, but it is a monthly subscription. So it's a little bit more pricey, but if you're using all of the functions um, and you need it for more than just designing SVGs, then it could be the right fit for you. But both will export to SVGs and you can bring them into Cricut Design Space and Cut. So do yourself a favor and don't go the screenshot route because it will cause really jagged edges and you will get those ugly jagged cuts, which you won't love. So I hope this tutorial helps and I hope that you try out Offset. If you do, make sure to tag me and show me your creations because that's my favorite part of my job. And if you have any questions, I also have a Cricut Crafts with Carly Hall Facebook group, which you can ask any questions in and the group is so helpful to answer anything or you can leave a comment below. So check out all the links in the description and I will see you in the next video.